month. How's your day? Good sessions, good content, and I wish you a good lunch right after this one. And I hope that you join me back for another session. So I will start talking about optional class. And why optional class? Because during my revision with my team, consultancy was teams, people sometimes really obsessed about using optional, but I found that they are using optional in the wrong way. And it's used as it's not intended to be like this. When we created in Java, eight optional class, it's intended just to provide a limited mechanism when we need to represent no result for a library missed return types. So you don't have to use it in many ways. It's not meant to be used as a data type. It's not meant to be used. For, it's just a container for methods. We don't use it for constructor, for setters. We are going to see all of these anti-patterns that I have observed while I'm used, like consulting, revisioning the team, and even I have added sooner cube rules to catch all of these anti-patterns or things that should not be done using optional class because also optional class is an expensive object. So it's nice, but... <laughs> so I would like to start. This session is like code-based, so you will find how it, the people is doing this in the wrong way and what is the preferred way to, to have it uh, working with optional class. So my name is Mohamed Taman and I'm working for DevTech and Groundbreaker Ambassador and Java Champion. So I'm here today to speak to you about this optional class. You can catch me here, definitely. This is my profile. This presentation will be on my GitHub, so you don't have to take picture or anything. It will be publicly al uh, uh, allowed. So you can just search my name on Google and you'll find all my GitHub LinkedIn so you can get everything. Just I need you to focus because we have a lot to say. So our agenda is going to be how we should and how we can survive from null pointer exceptions using optional class. Because sometimes if you use optional class, you'll get null pointer exception or there is exceptions will be thrown even if you use it, which is not intended to be like this. Also, we are going to see how we can set and return uh, values when there is no values present. So what we do if there is no value, how we set it, which methods inside optional class to use effectively in each cases. How to consume optional values effectively and also how to avoid optional anti-patterns, so which is overusing of optional class. And finally, I like optional class and there is I would like to chain it with stream API. I would like to use it with different things. So how to use the extended capabilities that optional class provided for us. So we have the first question I got. Hey man. I'm getting null even if I'm using option. How it is? Because first we can see something like this commonly used. Some code like this in your library, and you just assign optional to null. And it's pointless. Why? Because it's a container, it's not a value. It's container for holding value. So it's pointless to initialize it to null. What we should do is very simple. We should do it like this, initialize an empty. Optional. I'm going through things you definitely know, but there is a lot of things that I have to mention because it's very important. So always we should initialize this container with empty containers. So when we use the methods, we are not provided to get null pointer exceptions. When you get the return type as option from your method. Remember from the first statement, optional is intended to provide limited mechanism for library methods return types. This is very important. So we use it for return type, but it's not rule of thumb to use it for all the return type for the methods, especially when it comes to collections. And we will see this. So another thing that you can have, that you just have methods that get your employees as option and just you are going to get called optional and get, and suddenly you will get an exception. Why? Because you should 
check first about your employees. Don't do this. You have to use this present. Is the value already you present? Then you get it. If it's not, do something else. So you have to use is present because if you just directly code it, you will get null point, not null pointer exception, no such element exception, which is we don't need it. We should check first for the value. And that this is also don't use null directly when you have an option and need a null reference. Sometimes, sometimes we have to provide null reference for some method. If you take into account, like when you use reflection API, method.invoke, this one, the first argument always, or sometimes should be null, if it's static. Method, this is representation. If you're trying to get an instance of the class, and you have some, uh, the, then this method is a static method, this is, should be null. Then the invoke will invoke the static method. If it's not, it should be normal instance method, then it will have different mechanism for invoking your method. So what if we need null reference? Use option. We play it like this. Yes, we have some mechanism to get it, and you can use my instance or else. If it's present because it's instance method, return it. If it's not, return null. So in this opportunity, if you have another thing that you can, you're always checking for nullability. And you use optional in an elegant way. OK. Another thing that what to do when no value is present. Sometimes you would like to return default value, compute the value, do nothing with the value. So which type of library I have to use? So something like this. <coughs> You usually, you have like user-defined status when you don't have status, and then you just give the status and you get some optional things, and sometimes this optional could be empty, and you just normally use is present, which is correct, and get status to get, if it's not, return an empty result, which is no status. This is, it's correct. But it's not an elegant way because there is another method that we can use an elegant way, which is what else? You don't have to do all of these checks because there is a method. If the value is present, return it. If it's not, return the default one. But bear in mind, there is another method also you can tell me. What about or else get? So what is the difference? It's also return. The value, if there is no value present, which is what you provide, there is a big difference here, which is performance. Why? When you have a really constructed or default value, you know, like this one, you can use or else. Because definitely it will not compute. It's always evaluated. The content over here is always evaluated. If you pass a method, it will be evaluated, even if you have a value. So if the optional contain a value, this also are going to be evaluated. But performance-wise, if you're trying to call a method to compute your status or your another value, don't use this. Especially if you know that, that you will have a value. So at that time, if you have something like this, and you just call or else, it will work. <coughs> but it will be expensive in terms of performance. Because as I told you, if you have a value, it's going to be computed. So what to do is just, and even don't do this. Because yes, I can use if present and get or else return the computer. Now it's very easy to just use this. Or else get. If you have value, it will be returned. If you don't, this is will be computed. But if you have value, this, this one it will not be evaluated. So it's like you're getting values from the cache and database. If you find it in the cache and you get it, that's fine. If it's not, go to run the query from the database to get this value. If you use, if you use or else, just only not or else get, post queries are going to be executed. You already have the value from the cache, but the, the query are going to be executed against the database. To avoid this, performance-wise, use or else get. So, rule of thumb, whenever you have constructed already value, like string or whatever it is, it's safe to use or else. <laughs> Computed value, you have to use or else. 
So if I would like sometimes we need to throw an exception to just represent. There is a lot of cases that's an argument from developers, but I, here I would like to throw an exception. Okay, it's very easy for you if you would like to this. If the value is not present, I'd like to throw normal exception or my exception or whatever it is. So you have like so don't do this also because it's not elegant, and you have something that you can use which is or else. And by the way, this is since Java 10. Whenever you see this flag I put here means in which cases that you can use. If you are using Java 9 and below, you can use another method that I'm going to provide for you, that you can provide your own exception. But this is since Java 9. So if you have GDK 9 and above, you can use this method. It's normally, if the value is not present, throw no such an exception. So what if I would like to extend my capability to provide my exception, not just no such like an empty value or employee not found or a legal state exception like this. So definitely don't use is present to get and it's not elegant. So if I would like to do this explicit exception that I would like to throw, you have the second version, which is or else throw your exception and take lambda. So you can, this is a default, and you can create a new argument with some values inside your exception to throw it. So it's, this is the one, if you are, this is since Java 8. So if you are using Java 10 above, use or else. And if you are still using Java 8 and 9, you can use this one. It's clear? Any questions? So how to consume option effectively? If I have values, if I don't, if I don't like to do just I'm checking about the, the values and I don't like to do anything, or how to consume many ways to consume option. Or I would like so if I have value, I would like to get another option because or else or else get return and the the, the wrap value. It doesn't return uh, directly option as an innocent, but sometimes we need to chain it in a stream, to chain it with lambda expressions, to provide more filtration or values. This is how we are going to speak about this. But what I most seen from people always using is present, get, and then doing a lot of stuff in else, and then chaining if else, if else, if else, but why you have to do this? There is methods inside the class that we can use it, and easily we can chain it with different API live streams as we are going to see. So don't use this one to do nothing with the value if you just would like to check it. So sometimes I would like to, if it's the value is present, just print it to me. I would like just to check the message returning file. So don't do this. It's easier to do it like this. There is if present, and this is since Java 8. So you can use it, which means if the value is present, OK, just enough for me and the print this value for me. If it's not, it will not do anything. Okay. So also don't use this to execute empty base action if value is not present. So it means we do it like this. Okay, if the status present, print for me the status. If it's not, just print status not found or do something else. And we can represent this easily using if present or else provide the first one the action that you would like just to do on the value or provide any other action identify that the value does not exist in your option another thing that i have seen is if you would like to sit and return the other optional when there is no value is present i would like to return an, an empty option if there is no value, but I have to avoid null pointer exception, do you remember rule one? Just empty. As all the methods inside, if there is no value, they will return an empty uh, optional class. So if you would like to do this, normally we are going to do like, we have created an optional class of bending, and it's optional of string, and I'm checking the status, and if it's not, just return. There is an elegant way and much easier to use as a method, which is, we can use this, but there is a problem here. 
because or else get or or else as I told you it just returns the wrapped value it does not return as a collection then you have to chain another collection this is a perfect job of the method which is called or or just return another instance of the optional so it take the value wrap it inside the optional and return it another option of that value so don't overuse it and chain another option like this one to just provide I, I need another option of that value or representing empty value or whatever it is if the value is not present you have or and even we can use this much easier if you don't <coughs> like to create the default one because the supplier method here take an option type did you get it when we work with lambdas using if else or is present and get will break the lambda chain because we love to use lambda stream the filter dot map the flat map the find first if you just trying to to return first the value after getting the stream and then you return an optional and then you would like to 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 check about the value you're going to break the chain and culture you know and boilerplate your code so what we need to do don't do something like this it's very easy and by the way all the methods from lambda like find first find any reduce return an option so don't confuse it. you can use it so if you have something like this and you have a method here you can and even don't do this by the way because we yes we are using and to use a map but why find first already return an option so if you like to do this elegantly just you have this Find first, it just changed with the map because it's returned an optional and optional does have a map method and you get the name and then if it's not exist the value in this git product that git name just only return or else not found. So you didn't break the chain. You already chained all your methods combination between lambda and optional class methods. That's clear. So avoid even using this point because also we we broke the chain and the previous one as I told you that we are always people trying to find because you just think about stream is different API and I have to get the final result then I have to check about it. <coughs> so this is the correct way of using it. Let's see another receipt. And yes, we don't have all also to check about the value to throw an exception if we using lambda exception. So we usually do the, like this. We get the product and we see that the card if it's present first, then if it's contained that product, okay, if it does not throw this null pointer, no such element exception. It's very easy to have it this way. You can use filter. Because optional does have filter. Yeah. filter and just you get the items and you check the pair or else through the exception so it's very elegant more than you just trying to use it in this way don't overuse optional by chaining its method for the single purpose of getting values yes if we can do this checking for nullability because if this is nullable it will return empty collection then it's not just ending this is convenient we are seeking just for the value so be straightforward don't chain optional with optional to return optional to get some message of the option just for getting the final value or getting something else just be straightforward because sometimes it's overusing it means complicated things for you and the readability of your code ah. This is lovely because I, I tend to, when I say to my team, for example, yes, we use it for return methods. Ah, so we have to use it as a instance field. What? It's not intended to be any instance field, should be, because it's not a data type and it's very expensive object. It's four times expensive than the normal data types, like integer, like string, like whatever it is, because it's container and it's contained values. 
and also it's not meant, it's not implementing serializer. So you cannot use it for entities, for domain objects, for transferring, for value object. It's just meant to return, represent no result value if it is. Or else, represent the value if it does exist. So let's see the most common anti-pattern people try to use it, not even including my team. So the first thing that we use optional as instant variant, which we can't use it like this. Because it's not meant to be like this. Because sometimes even people try to, it's equal to null. So I'm going to check it and then they use it in constructors, then they use it in setters method. And as a caller for your API, I don't have to use optional to initialize the value that I would like to provide for your method. So you introduce dependency and it become more cultured and dependent on some object that you cannot easily remove it. So don't use this, normally use this. This is how it should be. Don't use optional as instant variables. Another thing is to use optional in constructors. Just to avoid checking and to make sure that we didn't get null uh, values. It's not meant to be like this because I can't pass null values. I can provide optional with null values. You don't know what is inside the option. And just you make sure that you're trying to make sure that I'm providing a value which is not null. No. So if you're trying to do something like this, and then you're trying to check about the container name to provide something, this is wrong. Don't do this, ever. Don't use optional inside any constructor. And don't force your caller, API caller to use optional. I just would like to provide for you some values. And this is your own problem to check about the nullability of the value. So it's easy to have it like this. You have object class objects and you have the checking mechanism that the, we provided since Java 8 and the same like arrays, the same like collections classes that you can check about the values and then throw based on this. Only use it and get it. If you'd like to check about nullability of your things when you get the value, here it is in your getter method. Because we have said it's intended to be used for methods return types. But we will see that people also tend to use it for all the return types methods, like all the getters, which is another anti-pattern, a commonly mistake. So this is what you should do. Clear constructors with normal variables, check out your nullability, and if it's not, if it's okay, then you can get this post code and of null, but because it finally will return you, if it's null, it will return an empty collection. If the value present, the value will be returned in that option. Using in setters also the same. Constructors the same like setters, so you don't use it like this. Sometimes I found like in domain objects, people try to use it like this. Instance, then you have to set it here, and then okay, we can get it like this. This is very hard. Optional field may be null even, so you cannot use it like this. And this is like you are forcing me to provide you an optional of my value, which is why I would like to provide just the value for you or get the value from the database, which is trained, and you don't have to force me or force the database for conversions. So normally, if you'd like to do it same way, normal string, your simple method is normal because it's not your database data types. And finally, you can check about nullability and you get it. Method. Same using a method arguments, and this is commonly also used. So, if you have something like this, and then you provide an optional of the renderer and the name, and you're trying to check about the ability, throwing exception, using even what if I, I just here supply for you another value, but I removed it, this is what throw a pointer exception. So you cannot use it like this, and then this is how you can call the method. Do you see how it is? If you really call it like this. So normally avoid this and just provide your method like this elegantly, check around the normal values, and finally you can call it like this. 
Did you see the complexity between the first code? Yes, we use optional, it's nice, and to provide that part. You cultured your code by enforcing that the site call it to do all of these kind of things, to just call your method. Then I will throw out your API. We can also use the pointer exception if you'd like to refer things, so you can use objects. It's different enhanced based on your whatever you like, how the object or exception that you'd like to throw for the mechanism, but don't use optional inside method argument. Never ever. It's not intended to be like this. Only in method return types. So here I'm trying to use object to just provide some mechanism of checking. So I don't have to check if it's null like before. Here I do this manually. So why I have to do this? We have since Java 8, this method, which already will throw null pointer exception with this message. If this is normally is null. So it's automatically for you one line, check for nullability, create a new exception, null pointer exception with the message that you provide throw it if it's containing null values. And this is also, you can have it do something. I need to return no, uh, like default value. I don't like to throw exception for something like here. Okay, for customer name, if there is not exist, so it's anonymous. So you can use this require none null else get. So you don't, here in this case, you don't like to throw an exception, just to return default value that they would like to assign so it's anonymous. It's the same like bending status, things that we explored at the beginning. So and this is finally your method. If you'd like to extend more to have your own uh, methods like this elegantly, and but based on your uh, way of providing the exception, it's your own exception. So we can create something like this. You have my objects and you have a, a, a private uh, constructor just because it's a static and final and then you provide like the static method required not null for else row and you have the object you have the supplier which is extend your specific class and then you have here the implementation and this is how you can use it so i can throw a degrading exception i can use normal this i can throw any exception of my choice even my built-in exception that i specific for my domain business then with the methods that you like. You customize just your way, but in elegant way, and then finally, your calling methods still the same, and you don't change anything. Yes, this is very true. Don't use optional to just represent empty collection, or set, or map, or whatever it is. Already, when you have a return type, which is domain object like hypernate and this, Usually it's return list of something, set of something, collection. So don't use optional to wrap that collection to say, but you can check return optional, which is empty or not. Then you work based on this. Don't culture, you just don't wrap your problem another, with another layer. So because all these methods already, don't do this because if items could be null and then you provide optional of list of items. Why? You can say items that is empty. Does this exist? You have all the methods in maps and sets and SM. So don't use this and normally you can return like this collections with empty list or the items and just check for nullability. And don't choose, don't change your API calling back. Don't do it like Previously, you optional of list of string, you're complicating things. Optional meant for one value. And collections and arrays already have the mechanisms that can you can check about its content. Does it already exist or not? So don't change because you are just providing another layer above things that you can check without optional plus. And also, uh, yes, avoid using optional inside inside your collections, like this. Because I had a lot of argument with my, some of my team and people in consulting. You know, I don't like to have here null. So I have to provide optional and I will, you have to provide of null but because if it's null, it will return empty collection. But it's not meant like to be like this. 
then I have to call the, the get item and this get item should return for me an optional then I have to get the item the, the, the rep type from inside it I'm just complicating and also I can provide null here and also I can provide different values than your goodies that should be inside your collection so don't do this and then you check about things here and you start to unwrap items to see if it's not... If you like to do this business, it's very easy. Just do it like this. You have to implement a tiny git message inside your uh, class and you have your hash map, put your things. If you like to check about nullability, you just call this, provide the item and the key. And this is the return type in case of there is a nullability. If it's already initialized, there is null it will be null. And this is map git or default. So if there is a key, there is a value corresponding to that key exists, return it. If it's not, return not found. So here we have two keys, but for the third, we don't have it. So the return value will be not found. This is like normal code with just simple trivial implementation, which will save your time for implementing all of these business logic. Not relevant and culturing your item with optionals and also remember that I told you optional is an expensive object it's four times costly in terms of memory more than the normal object which is a string wrappers everything so this is you have to put it in your mind okay? because when you get the collection you need allocation of the memory you need just to wrap all of this again inside the memory and calling all of this means consumption of the memory and the performance of it. Another thing that you can also use, you have the maps, you have the set, so you can use mechanism like contain keys, you can, this is the checking. If you have even the key, then return the value. If it's not, so it would be skipped. We use it for for loops to check if the key really exists in the map or not, or set it in the map. You can just implementation by extending hash map and provide the git method that I showed to you and you can ju just also co compute if it's absent. So you do something if the key and the value does not exist in the map. Return normal value or something like this. And you can use also default, uh, defaulted maps inside the fetch There's a lot of mechanism that you can use with collection, but avoid using optional inside or to wrap empty collections. And this is even more. Of course, to have applied. You are creating a map of optional of string, or even both of the arguments optional of string, optional of string. Lovely. So don't do this. What is the difference between of nullable and of because it's always confusion between people when to use this and because both of them providing the same mechanism of returning the uh, option uh, empty optional. But there is a little risk here. Something like this. If you use off, it means this is thrown up point to exception if item is null. So we use off if we have constructed. Do you remember? Or else for computation, the same here. Use off <coughs> if you have like of Mohammed, my name, of attendees, of bending, of status, but you just created something with the value. If you have this constructed, you can use of. If it is computed coming from method and you don't know is it optional or the value is empty or something, use of nullable because nullable, check about the nullability and if the value is null or does not exist, it will return you an optional, empty optional class. So in this case, computed value, normal values, you can use of and in this case, you have to use of nullable because it's computed. And the other way, you use this is it will work, but it doesn't make any sense because it's not okay. The value already present all the time. So what is the point of calling me of nullable? You can't call off. So you use this much way. This is the end. More point, uh, more variable, and this is how it should be done. Computed value means of nullable. Not computed value means of. Same like or else means normal value, which is computed, 
not computer. I will deceive you. So you have to be focused. When to use or else? Anybody? You remember or else? When we have a constructed already constructed value, when to use or else get? For computed. Do you know why? Do you remember? Because of the performance. For for of nullable and of because of the non pointer exception. Yes, this is all another like anti pattern. This is because the people is not aware sometimes that there is another optional of normal data type. So they intended to create like optional of like 50 double of float double uh, long whatever it is data types. But this is very expensive because it's introduced boxing and unboxing. If you would like to use primitive construct optional of primitive directly, you have already optional end of optional long and optional double. So this is very important when you use primitive data types directly so you avoid boxing and unboxing, which is very expensive as we know for performance. Is this different from, uh, like is this fundamentally different from the optional itself? Yeah, no, no, it's the same optional but just about the other option is of, of, of type generic. This of type int, and this is long, and this is of type double, right. specifically. So, and the, all of them available since Java 8, so you can use it with your normal GTK, or even if you are upgrade. Okay? Yes, we all like optional, and I would like to do more with optional. Yeah, I like, I feel love lambdas and uh, strings, and you like to chain everything inside. I need to defer for a little bit things more and more. So let's see what we can do more with Schnapptas. So we have spoken about how to avoid now, even if it is optional. Anti patterns inside using your API design when you design API. Just the only thing that you can put in your mind that return types for single value if you would like to represent null or uh, not null, no result, instead of returning null, which is always causing an errors. Collections, no, leave the collection as a list of whatever it is, return it because it has the capability to check about the content and don't use optional as an instance variable or inside <coughs> setters, constructor, or even your method arguments. This is sometimes we would like to test about collection, we're using testing and we'd like to assert for some certain values. By the way, so we, we're trying to do this. Why you try to get unwrapped the, the wrapped value? Don't do this. It's so simple you can do this. So what about what is what is the problem here? You can figure out what which method will, is going to be called behind the scene to check about the values. Equals. But equals trying to compare objects, right? No. Implementation for equals the set if you're optional, always checking about the red value. So internally, the calling the the optional instant value dot get and the other optional dot get. So you don't have to write. Just if you have to like this, just call it and it will be definitely. This is will return for you the same value. So you don't care about the implementation on getting and the red values because it's already done in the implementation of object uh, equals method inside the option of itself. It's different from the others. Because I told you, it's a container, so there is no value from comparing the object itself. I need the, the contained value to compare. So also identity sensor, this is what I told you. If you remember, because we, we are tr trying to check in about the content wrap, so you don't have to use this. This is what return false. While I'm expecting, it should be true. Yes, because we are different objects. We don't have the same data types. Different allocation references. It's not a string. So do it like this. Object.equals. Then the values will going to be uh, checked. This is mainly coming from testing, coming from, you like, we have to option a class and should represent the same what the message bring button return false then ah okay why 
you use equal operation, you shouldn't do this because you have to use equals. So this is a common mistake when you're trying to test or if even just comparison. Sometimes we would like to filter inside the option to see if there is some logic behind filtration. If you like to check, so don't do this. To just a check. So here I have my password, or I get a password. So I would like to check about the lens validation, and I'm just normally checking. Yes, it's present. I can use it, but it's not the elegant way. Then it's okay. Just make sure that you get the value of the lens. If this is the business, okay, you can turn it through. If it's not, return false. So it's easier to do it like this. So just you have the your user, you get the password from your user, then you can return true or false based on the filter method. And this filter method exists since Java 8, so it's available for you since Java 8. So you can use it at any time to just reject the red content based on the business project that you would like to check against. And it takes lambda expression, so whatever it is. Either it's a body or single statement or something. Any questions? So, I do. So, the elegant solution versus the inelegant that still works with the if statement? Is there any? Yeah, statement? yeah, it's the, it was if statement, but there is a bad repetition between if get, if present get. There is sometimes get also marked as deprecated. So, we're trying to use the methods, and this is why they're trying to provide. Uh, we always trying to enhance the API to providing all the methods that can present for you the value in, in correct way, performance-wise and everything. But when we created the beginning, we have this is present and get value. And sometimes we make decision, we are going to remove get, and there is a method that will return value, or you do something on the value, or we are going to stack. So the elegant way I'm telling you, from the point that we will, sometimes we are going to remove it because it's introduced problems which is not intended to be. The same what we do in the next session, I'm going to speak about the most important like features since Java 9 and through 14, which is not all the features, definitely just the most important ones. So I'm going to speak about this. Also, I'm going to speak about what we have removed and uh, how you can use GD, latest GDK without breaking your code. Because this is a common question, right? Like, I cannot move to GD Mule or GDK because everything will break. It will not break because if you know about the APIs that we remove since every GDK, but you still you don't have to migrate to GPMS, which is module system. Because I'm using production Java 11. I would like to use garbage G1 GC, and the optimization happens. A lot of features introduced by my team in development to use Java 8. But for production environment and containerization of microservices, I use GDK 11. Because since Java 10, we have introduced enhancement for the GVM to be aware, container aware. So for memory management, for the Docker images, for processing management, it's really aware of what's the, the limitation inside the Docker image, not about the hosting. So we can speak about this in the next session. So it's some enhancement, but you don't have to stuck to Java 8. Take the, all the features, language changes that we have made without breaking it. And also, I'm going to provide you what we have removed. Then you can add it as a native dependency in your code. It's very easy. So, yes, this is since Java 11. Sometimes it's like some reduction of the code. So sometimes, if you'd like to see that. If this is optional and it's present or not, the values exist or does not exist. So in Java 8, just we have added is empty. So this is a new addition because I would like to touch every single method in the, inside this class. And the other alternative like optional int, optional double, optional long. So you are aware of the option because it's more commonly now used with development teams and libraries and everything. But Yes, we have an empty method, so you can check it just, you are saving few characters <laughs> and your type, so you know about these uh, things. And sometimes when we present the method, we provide some more enhancement beside the method. The same like, next we are going to speak about string, we have is blank. 
and we have this empty we introduced why there is a lens check or something but you can use the old one we didn't deprecate it yet we didn't kill it but the new one is unicode aware but the old one is not unicode aware so if you would like to check about spaces and it's represented as a unicode it will not be checked so this is why we introduce some methods because of the ground compatibility and sometimes you are not working with unicode so you can use the old one so as I told you, you just if you like to check about the option, it is the value is exist or not, just you can use uh, is empty. <laughs> Don't use is present. It's like I'm, I'm against is present. It's not against. We can use it, but this is because there is alternative. You know, if you if you have to use it, you can use it. But there is sometimes alternative elegantly, which is reduce all your if statements, so you can use it. So if you have something like this, and you'd like to, you know, make mapping transformations as we do with streams, like using map to transfer the, the stream, which is coming in some sort of values, and then I would like to transfer it to some different values. So we can, we usually do this. So we have an optional of upper name case, and then we would like to check. If it's not, we get another optional of the lower value or uh, the uppercase value of the lowercase value and then if it's not, I would like to return an empty optional so I'm avoiding my pointer exception and everything so it's easy to do it like this using map because map is going to check about the value if it is present, okay, there is nothing I'm going to do that transformation and I'm going to return to you the new transformed values in terms of optional of that value. If it's not, I'm going to return to you optional, empty option. <coughs> so simple. So why to have to do all of this while I have elegant solution like this? And much less coding and boilerplate. So example two, for example, something like this. We breaking the chain of the lambdas that we're using. Do you remember when I told you about first, find first, find any, reduce, you always return the final value because it's always return one argument. So it's always return an option. So we can change the option. So sometimes you just get the, the part from the stream here, from the collection, then you get the find first, assign it to option, then you check about if it's present, then you do the, your transformations. If it's not, you return not found, and this here, you get name. If this is inside your uh, your domain object or something like this, like hypernet domain object, things like this. So how to solve this in an elegant way? You can just do it like this. I'm sorry. In one chain. So you filter it. You get the first option, you do the map by the git name, then I would like to transfer it to upper cases, and if it's, there is no value, just return not found. Optional of not found. Because I would like to apply a value, not just optional of empty. And just make sure that you have checked this, the return type of this, because this is the big difference between map and flat map. Flat map take a supplier of optional to do the, the transformation and the, and the value, then wrap it inside optional. Empty uh, map is working on the value itself, making transformation and wrap it inside optional and return it to you. This difference between the Let's see it. And also, flat map has a greater also responsibility when it's used with streams. So to use Flat map to transform value. Did you see that hidden name now? How it looks like? It returns optional of string. So I can apply it to flat map. But we tend to do this filter find first, then at present, or else not found, then to uppercase if the, the final value is already presented. This is if we would like to use flat map. You get the filter, that's your product. Find first flat map to get name, but this time it's 
of options of none of it. So it will be either empty or the con optional containing the values. Then you do transformation to uppercase or else. Because sometimes if you'd like to apply some methods, but it's return optional, you have to use flat map. If just returning value, your methods getters, returning value, use map. Good idea? Let's get back here. The main difference, in this case, both of them the same value. You just I replaced flat map with map. This is all I did. This is all what I did here. See, this is the difference. But this is calling a method. If my domain object contains a method that does not return an optional, which is normal value, I can use map. If it return optional, same like this one, this is my design of API, I have to use flat map. The return type from post methods, map and flat map, is optional of wrapping that value. But the different how you call it, with normal values, or if I have different method doing some transformation, but it's designed to return an optional, I have to use flat map. Did you get the idea? Is it clear? Okay, now I would like to, to, I have stream, and I would like to change my stream of uh, my, my list of product or something like this to do some collection, finally doing some filtration, getting values. So sometimes you do like, like this, and we have fetch product by ID, and of none of it, blah, 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 and let's return this, so I have to use, I can use map, definitely because it will return this one and I change it with stream and the map, by the way, this map is a stream map, not optional map because it's of the product list. Then I would like to transfer it to optional product then because I would like to change. Then make a filtration if the value is present, then map this to the internal value, then put it in the list and return it to me as a product. So, the elegant way to do this is use optional good stream. Optional good stream is wrapping your optional around stream of one value, which content inside this. So I can use it with normally uh, the stream API. So in this way, I can use here, as you can see, that this is normal stream, then I, I would like to transfer it, then the flat map, I say for the flat map, yes, please, I would like to code, to construct a stream of optional value of the red content, and then collect this into uh, the final list of product. So I'm using here flat map, but you will find two things from different. And also you can convert this using optional that stream will collect, because stream it's just communicating or connecting the optional API with the stream API. So you can chain everything without, with your stream API. Small thing that you have to note here between the previous code and this, this is more reduced code. Did you see this? Where is the map and filter? It's gone. Why? Because the stream allow you to replace map and filter with flat map when you chain it with stream because it do actually the same functionality that these two methods do. So finally you have it like this. You get it, you remove the second map and then you have just that map. A check about the value. If it exists, it will return for you a stream of transform and also you will do the transformation and finally it will provide for you a stream of that option and then you get this value into collection of list of code. So flat map with the streams, it allows you to replace map and filter because it does the same functionality for you. And finally, as I told you, this is the final of you can also con construct such a method inside your API and you can have an option and if you'd like to return it as a list of item to append it to a different uh, collection API, you can have it 
and just option the good stream, then you can collect the internal value to using all the collectors that you have inside your API. Almost this is everything that I have, and also it includes all the methods inside the optional class. So you will not find like if you went to GDK Java documentation optional class, you will find that all the methods that already exist there we have touched and just providing you a way how we can use optional class effectively and especially in pain this way and elegant way more. And also this elegant way is the way that we try to introduce the methods, why it's already exist, to use it. And the purpose it should be used. Then it will be easy for us and easy for you for migration. If you like to duplicate something, if I like to delete something, if you like to enhance something, that will be very easy as we did with the module system and these kind of things. So any questions, anything? So we have like five minutes, which is good. The slides available somewhere? Yes, it will be available. Just uh, on my GitHub account. And I will post it on Facebook. I will post it on Twitter, as I do always. So if, if you are following me, so you will get it. This is my document. Quickly, 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 quickly. Because we have to run for the lunch. <coughs> then I wish that I have you back in the next presentation. So you can take this one. This one. Take a picture and contact me at any time. Or just search on Google and you will find the GitHub account if you don't like to communicate with me. But it would be a pleasure to have you. Thank you for attendance and see you, I hope it's session.